even for birthdays, anniversaries, just general gifts. Uh, these hope these books, which I'm about to show you, hopefully. Um, and we're joined by the, yeah, the uh, Philadelphia Police Department, as always. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, right. <laughs> Let's get on with it, shall we? Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show today. Another episode of Gentry in a Jiffy. If you're not familiar with this particular series, it's where you guys email in or you leave uh, questions in the comments and hopefully I address them. Uh, this has come in from a few people and I do apologize. I've promised this video for absolutely donkeys, but here we are. Uh, and by the way, it's theurbangentry at gmail.com all one word if you want to submit a request or a question or whatever and, and hopefully I address it in these more concise, <laughs> trying to be more concise videos. So what are we talking about today? Well, I thought I'd do my top 10. Uh, it's not really a top 10, it's just 10 of my favorite uh, books on watches with a slight kind of horological slant. So um, I know that word gets banded about so much, uh, especially on YouTube and actually on Instagram as well. But people love to use that word and all they talk about is watches. Well, this is a little bit more broader than that. So hopefully you will enjoy my suggestions and actually pretty good timing because the holiday seasons are upon us. Now, before we get into it, quick wristwatch check. I'm wearing the Dan Henry 1962 Panda dial there on a Colorev, gorgeous. Okay, so this is the first book. It's The Magic of Watches by Louis Nadin. He is actually a family member of the uh, Ulysses Nadin family, prestigious watchmaker, of course. Uh, it's excellent book. It's very straightforward. It's like a dictionary, really, or, or a glossary of watch terms explaining everything. If, um, and it doesn't matter what level you're at, um, this is just such a useful book to have. For example, you know, you can see there the different types of decoration on, on dials, so tapisserie, uh, Clos de Paris, sunburst, and, and it just explains it in a very unpretentious way very very useful i oh and by the way there'll be a link to most of these books some of them are used that you can't buy anymore but you can find them on ebay this you can get on amazon and there'll be a link to my amazon store in the description as well okay next we have now you would have seen this actually you would have seen that in the intro the the regular intro spinning around i actually filmed the book for the intro but it is, of course, Thomas Tompion, one of the, the godfathers of British uh, watchmaking and, and watchmaking in general. I mean, he was crucial to, to the development of, of so many things. He's basically like the British version equivalent of, of Breguet, if, if you can imagine. But even earlier, he did start developing smaller movements, hairsprings in the 1600s. An exquisite book lots of great pictures so yeah if you're into horology definitely check this one out okay next we have a, a history of the marine nationale now as you can tell from the three tudors on the cover uh, there's a hell of a lot of tudor submariners in this book this is outstanding but not only just tudor we got all kinds of different brands that were issued to the marine nationale beautiful photos a lot of oh there we go there's a there's a there's an Amiga there. A lot of great photography. I recently acquired this. This is from Watch History. You can tell the writer of this book has spent donkey's years researching and it really has paid off. So it's not just Tudor. There, there's a Tag one, uh, Hoya 1000, there you go. Oh, and there's even a G-Shock, you know? Very, very cool. So if you're into like military history, uh, Tudor and uh, Marine National combat divers in, in general, this, Ah, oh, this is this is the kipper's knickers, really is. Okay, next we have an old favorite. Again, another figure that you would have seen rotating. It's old uh, Harrison there, the uh, the the inventor of the marine chronometer. He's one of the most important watchmakers ever to exist. One of the most important uh, Great Britons to ever exist. Short book, Darvis Belt. There is a DVD with Jeremy Irons and uh, what was the other actor? Ganborn. Uh, what's his, oh, I forget his name. An amazing story. I mean, not just him being able to figure out longitude and 
and, and help the Royal Navy. But even before then, in the, in the, um, in the early 1700s, his contribution and in, in ingenuity in, in, in uh, watchmaking was, I mean, he was a carpenter, but amazing story. And guys, check out this version, which you can also get. This is the illustrated, pretty much the same, but illustrated. And this has fantastic photos. And there he is. You, you would have seen him on pretty much every single intro for the last couple of years. Incredibly important, big hero of mine, just like Tompion. Okay, another book that's featured heavily on the channel. This is from the Design Museum, 50 Watches That Changed the World. I love this book because it just illustrates the point. It doesn't matter the price of a watch, if it's you know high horology or it's entry level, or if it's a Casio or a and whatever it is, this just shows any watch can be iconic if it's uh, important, obviously, to the history. It's a great little coffee table book. So, yeah, yeah you see here we have the, the Rolex Submariner with Sean Connery, uh, the Seamaster, the Datejust, um, the Pulsar, obviously, that was also in James Bond, instance, that incidentally, the Seiko First Quartz, the Monaco, you know, cracking book. Again, you would have seen it popped up in um, a whole bunch of videos. Do check that out, can't recommend it enough. Okay, next is, this is more kind of like a magazine. This is 2018, it comes out annually, as, as the book suggests. <laughs> Um, but it's just a great overview on, on a breakdown of all the big watch brands and their releases. I don't get this every year because it, you know, it is a bit expensive, but I get it every two years. Okay, number seven, we have Vachon Constantin, Artist of Time. This book, incredibly expensive. This was actually a gift from uh, a gentry member out there. I'm not sure if you want me to mention your name, but shout out to you. Thank you so much. Grazie mille per questo. Veramente qualcosa molto speciale questo. I'm probably never gonna own a Vacheron Constantin. Amazing history, and I think this book highlights that with some of the most beautiful photography, watch photography I've ever seen. The actual machinery used, you might have to get it from eBay. But ultimately, this book also a demonstration of how to do watch photography. I mean, I've never seen watch photography better than this. It goes into all the techniques that go into um, high-end horology there, so very cool indeed. Number eight, this is a personal favorite. This came out in 2012 to celebrate 100 years of Fortis. It goes into the whole illustrious history. I've talked about Fortis many, many times. Oh, there, there we had John Harwood, the inventor of the uh, first automatic wristwatch done in collaboration with Fortis. Their history, their, their, all their watches here from the early you know, classics like the Fortissimo, experimental plastic watches, and of course their fliegers and professional watches up until one of the biggest chapters and most important eras of, of, of their watchmaking as you can see space there amazing company I, i've said it many many times one of the most underrated swiss brands of all time without a shadow of doubt you'll have to search for this don't think it's available but this is a prize in my collection, certainly. Okay, next we have two Rolex books. Now, I wasn't sure which one to include, so I'll just put them both in. Personally, I like this one. Uh, this is the history of the icons and record-breaking models there. This is the Rolex story. This is not a bad book, but it just doesn't compare, which I, I have done a video reviewing just this book. The photography, the quality, and the easy layout. This is just a far superior book in my opinion, but if you're really into Rolex, I'll just get them both, you know, they're, they're quite affordable, both on Amazon, I think they're still in print. Okay, number 10, we have the Aztec calendar. Now, as you guys know, I actually have Aztec calendar pendant, which I wear. A huge chapter of horological history that's been overlooked. This was incredibly accurate. I actually saw the real thing in Mexico City. You can go see it there. It's uh, just by the Zocolo, big main square there. It's huge. This is, this is literally as tall as a double-decker bus. And uh, this just goes into the meaning breaks down how it actually functions. It's fascinating. I traveled Mexico extensively. I love Mexico. My wife is, uh, was born there. Is, um, she's part Mexican. So for me, it's, it's a really important and overlooked bit of integral history of horology. So 
yeah, this is just a great, because it is a complex thing. The understanding of mathematics was amazing, but this breaks it down fairly well. Okay, so that was my 10 favorites. A few honorable mentions. First of all, God's Clockmaker about Charles of Wallingford, the creator of the first mechanical clock, which happened to be in England. Uh, you'll see there's a lot of kind of uh, <laughs> English history here. That's because England really doesn't get the credit it deserves for, for their horological um, contributions. But way ahead of his time, there he is. There's an actual picture of him. Next we have clocks and watches. This is by, who's this? By? Ronald Purcell. This is just a great overview to classic antiques, really. It's a connoisseur's guide, apparently, but I love it just because the pictures are so luscious. Fantastic. And lastly, one book I'd like to mention. I don't actually own this. I'm bidding on one on eBay as we speak, but uh, The Belova, A History of Firsts, incredible book. A friend of mine owns this. Belova, without a doubt, is one of the most important American brands, and their history is just unbelievable. That book really does it justice. I'm going to add that to my um, personal collection very, very soon. And lastly, this, I think it's out of print as well, but the Frank Edwards Swatch, a guide for connoisseurs and collectors. And you wouldn't believe how much some of these <laughs> watches go for now. But anyway, very, very cool. Oh, and lastly, I should mention, so this is a catalog from uh, JLC. A lot of the brands you can write to and get their catalogs for free. You submit your details and they'll send you a catalog. So I do that a lot. I have every particular brand, I, you know, everything from Amiga, um, Lange, Nomos, you name it, so you can just get them for free. So I do uh, suggest giving that a go. But anyway, do let me know your favorite suggestions in the comments below. Uh, I hope this was useful. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao. Now, before I go, guys, I just want to quickly tell you about this extremely cool app that Watchbox have launched. This is my own personal go-to app for everything watch-related. Using the app, you can keep track of the real-time value of your watch collection. You can store watches in your digital watch box and even try on watches using an augmented reality. So don't miss out and please go to the App Store and download it today. You can access all of my latest videos right there in the app itself. And if you haven't already, please follow me on the official Urban Gentry Instagram and of course the Facebook UGWC. But most importantly of all, keep it positive, onwards and upwards.